We found our good friend Daryl Peel, and Daryl, there's a lot of things happening in the cattle markets that may have something to do with drought. Let's start with that. Well, you know, the first thing that's happening right now is it's raining, yeah. which is a really good sign in Oklahoma. We continue to get these timely rains. Uh, we need lots of moisture on a timely basis, and we're getting the first part of that. So expectations go up here that uh, we continue to make some progress. And, and, and all the runoff may start filling ponds, hopefully. That's right. If we can get the soil moisture profile up, then we can fill some ponds, and that would really solve a lot of our basic problems from the cattle perspective. Okay, and, and there's some big news that's happened over the past week or two in the cattle markets. You know, a number of things have happened over the last week or two. The two grain reports that USDA issued last week were really important. Uh, one of them confirmed that we're going to plant the largest corn acreage since 1936, or at least that's the expectation at this point. Uh, that was what everybody expected. The surprise last week was the grain stocks report, which says that we've done such a good job of rationing grain use this winter that we actually have more of the old crop corn available. And of course, the corn market took that hard. They went down, but feeder cattle markets responded very, very well to that. And so what we've seen is kind of a turnaround. The feeder cattle markets in particular have been relatively weak for the last two months. Feedlots have lost so much money, they've been kind of sitting on the sidelines. And this really brought them back into the market, I think. And so I expect to see some significant recovery in these feeder markets. We have to watch it here over the next few weeks. But I think uh, we've kind of turned things around. We've also seen the, the box beef market, which had gone up, went back down, and now it's trying to come back up again. And so again, all of these markets seem to be kind of getting some new footing. I think that's very important uh, as we go forward. It looks like we've, we've kind of turned a corner here and, and at least for a time being got a little bit stronger market outlook. Okay, now let, let's, let's go into a little bit more about that lag in the feeder markets. Let's talk about that. Well, you know, we saw low placements in February, um, and, and of course the prices have dropped unexpectedly. Uh, fed cattle markets and box beef mimicked last year's pattern, but feeder cattle markets went the other way and they've dropped. I think we've reached a bottom now. I think feedlots are back in the game. They're going to be buying cattle to reload those feedlots to some extent. Mm -hmm. And so I think we'll see stronger prices from now. Uh, you know, for the next few weeks, we'll build back up. And, and that's going to be really good news, particularly for those guys that have uh, graze out cattle on wheat. Mm -hmm. They'll be marketing them in a month. And, and I think they're going to have a chance for some stronger prices by the time we get there. OK, so things are looking good between, between the, the, the feeder markets, the, uh, the possibility of grazing out wheat, and then also the corn prices. Corn prices, again, we got some some quick relief here with the old crop corn and right now we have strong expectations for a better corn crop for for the new crop okay thank you very much daryl peel livestock marketing specialist here at oklahoma state university